Wait a minute, I have no, whoa, whoa, what are we doing? I am Mike Siegel, welcome to Straight Talk. Straight pools, all right? <laughs> Cut Hold on. Boy, am I an idiot. Hi, I'm Mike Siegel. Welcome to our podcast, Straight Pool. I'm here with Reed Pierce, Kim Davenport. And we have a special treat for you because we have no idea what we're doing. Anyway, we are here in reunion, and this is a reunion. Uh, we're going to give you a little insight on what happened during our telecast of we're doing all the uh, billiard series uh, shows. We're also doing some, uh, uh, ay, ay, ay. it doesn't matter what's the difference. Go ahead. Somebody say something. Somebody say something. That's, I, I was interviewed one time. I was playing in a tournament and I won the tournament and Miserac was commentating. This was uh, in Kentucky at the Pro Tour Championship. And he puts the mic up to me and he says, Say something. <laughs> no, I mean, I never forget that. that was perfect, Mike. Very good. So I did that intentional. Um, Reed, you uh, explain what happened to me now. I want you to say it. What happened to me when we were starting filming three, four days ago? Well, what exactly happened? Well, I can tell you this. When we got here, we started at one house. We ended up with a very nice place, but we had a little accident. We had to move to this house. We got over here, and all of a sudden, Mike really, really got <laughs> sick. He really got sick. I mean, he really got he sick. He was really, I was worried about him, really. It was, uh, it was not fun Yeah, for him. somehow, yeah, I don't know what happened. I must have caught some kind of flu, and I know where I got it from, Don. Don had it the <laughs> first day when we were here, and then I got it the next day. It was horrible. Now I feel much better. Well, I was on there. You, you kept me up for half the night, you know, the first <laughs> night. I mean, I, I don't know what that was about, but you sounded, I thought I was in a barn somewhere. That's no. how bad it was. Well, I got to give you credit, Mike. It was, I mean, literally you were sick. I heard it. I know it was, and I got to give you credit uh, for coming on set and pulling us through, buddy. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. So... We, uh, we really don't know what we're talking about. This is, uh, we're, we're going to give you a little insight on, this is our first or second podcast, second, I believe, and we are trying our best. We're going to give you some different uh, things related to pool. We got some funny stories, got a bunch of different things. Make sure you go to the website, probilliardstour.com. We have all these shows in their original format. We also have memorabilia. We have shirts. We have hats. We have pool shoes, we have cue sticks available, many things. You always got to keep checking the website. We will be doing streaming platforms on many different sites. That's a little over my pay grade. Kim can explain that better, right? <laughs> well, I don't know if I can explain it better. I, I hope I can explain it a little bit, but uh, we're going to go to basically every platform. I mean, you know, we have Apple, we have YouTube, and, and there's several, I think there's like 15, the last I counted of uh, streaming platforms out there available and we're going to be on all of them and we're going to have some great content for you and uh hey you know i i, I i've got a little story here uh i was having a problem and i think it was 92 i was in a drought and i have a friend larry that was a psychiatrist back in modesto and i said larry you know I'm, I'm i'm having some problems i didn't know if it was in my head or whatever he says I, I i need to talk to you about it and he says kim he says are you asking me uh, as a psychiatrist or as a friend? And I said, Larry, you know, we play golf a lot together. I said, as a friend. And he says, go see a psychiatrist. That's exactly what he told me. So <laughs> I never did get, uh, I never did get uh, to talk to anybody about it, but I figured out the problem. I think I won the next year, so. <laughs> and you have any psychiatrist stories now? I want to hear that. Me, I don't. So I don't really have any psychiatrists. Well, you, you need a psychiatrist, I, well, so I can tell you that being that around I know. you. No, I definitely need a psychiatrist. I do I know that for I a do fact. have a funny story to tell, though, uh, just off the cuff. Uh, one time uh, back in, I think it was 1989 in Jackson, Mississippi, I was uh, at a pool room, and uh, the place was packed. I'm talking about completely packed, probably 500 people up in there. They were playing league, uh, people in there having a good time eating. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, this guy taps me on the shoulder and uh, he says, uh, do you want to play some pool? I, I was known around the Jackson area and, and all over the country at that time pretty much. And I was thinking, you know, this guy knows me. And I looked at him and I was like, no, I, I don't want to 
I don't want to play any. You know, I was nice to him. And, I, and so I kind of looked back around and, I, and he tapped me again. And he said, hey, seriously, you want to play some for 500 a game? At that point, I, I knew he didn't know who I was. <laughs> so I looked at him and I said, are you serious? You came in here and you're tapping me on the shoulder and asking me to play for 500 a game with all these other people in here. I said, you've got to be the unluckiest guy in the world. <laughs> and literally, he was serious. We went and played. And he ended up losing like four games to me. But the guy was a really a pool player on the road and just happened not to know who I was and picked me out of the crowd. I he was unlucky. I, I, have an, yes. I have a guy that's more unlucky than that. And here's this. Now you brought this up. I was hanging around in Metuchen, New Jersey. So it's, now this is in our prime. Myself, Steve Miserak, and Ellen Hopkins are in this pool room, in Miserak's pool room. We were practicing, a world tournament was coming up. I called Steve, I go, hey, can I, you know, let's come out there and let's play some straight pool, you know, to warm up, right? He goes, all right. This guy, Tony Watson from Canada, first time he ever came to the United States, he happens to show up into this room. So first he wants to gamble real high. I mean, real high, right? So I'm thinking it's a joke, you know? He comes up, he goes, you wanna play? Like me. I go, yeah. Um, I know it's a joke, right? So he asked me. Anyway, we play, I, the guy played pretty good, but he couldn't play me. I beat him, right? Next, Hopkins gets him. He plays Hopkins, he goes broke again there, almost broke. Then he plays Miserac. He doesn't find out till after it's over that he played, like maybe at that time, three of the best players on the planet. Myself, Hopkins, he lost like $6,000, left, and never came back again. <laughs> that guy, that guy that was, was pretty unlucky. I remember was Jerry. Yeah, Jerry yeah, Watson. He played yeah, yeah. snooker uh, a little bit and pool and nine ball and all. Did he you was, know him? He was a good guy. Camp? I knew yeah. Jerry. He, he, yeah. wrote, he wrote a little book about pool. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, what's the odds? He did get unlucky, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we have a lot of different subjects. I'm going to throw one off to the cuff. I still go back to celebrity people that like to play pool. Now, I'm saying this because we are doing this straight pool podcast. I, I got that one, Don. We have that. You're going to meet Don shortly. Thank you very much. So anyway... Uh, a, you know, who's a pretty good friend of mine, Joe Rogan. Uh, he's kind of up there now, but he's a real good pool player. In my opinion today, probably one of, if not the best celebrity player. There goes all of our equipment. There you go. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there are a lot of guys that over the years that are celebrities uh, or even sports figures that play. You know, yeah, I'm thinking off the top of my head, Paul Sorvino uh, was a good player, Jerry Orbach. Peter Falk was a great player. Jackie, Jackie Gleason. Gleason. Paul Newman was actually not too bad. I got to throw Tom Cruise in there. I mean, I taught him, so he picked up the game very quickly. Uh, but Rogan, I think, is on a different level. No, I mean, he. we played on a real tight table in L.A., and he actually ran out on me one game playing. Have you ever actually played a pro event or, or a tournament out in L.A.? Uh, I'm not sure. Do you know that? I, I was out there at the time, but I, I, I don't know. I could play for money. I, I don't know that either, to be honest with you. I mean, he's worth like two hundred million. I guess he could play for a few Nowadays, bucks. But yeah. Not hey, Joe, look, if you're watching, I would love to play you some. I haven't played any in a while, any in a while, but I would love to try try you some for like you know a hundred a game or something, just something to do. Listen, by the way, um, have you ever seen? Uh, the impersonation that Joe Rogan does of Earl Strickland. Okay, first of all, how are you going to play pool if you're not properly equipped? Said I don't understand how they're getting away. Where's your beekeeper's outfit? You don't have no ass weights. I saw that pool was a greater game than baseball at 10. No, then get the fuck off the table. Oh, I definitely have seen that. Jump cues, Earl. Yeah, people's got to have to go on YouTube to find that one. All you got to do is pull up uh, Joe Rogan, Earl Strickland. It's extremely funny. Now, Max, uh, Joe Rogan's good friend, through pool is really Max Everly. That's the guy that is kind of the Rogan connection to pool. But How did you meet Joe Rogan, Mike? I met him, I was in California, and I was hanging around with... Uh, um, Eric Peterson? Huh? 
Eric Peterson, and Max Everly. Max Everly said, I really didn't know who Joe Rogan was. I mean, I had heard of him this and this like 12, 13 years ago. He said, hey, my friend really loves pool. He'd love to meet you, you know, all that. I go, okay. So we go into the pool room and we started playing. I really didn't think, you know, I had seen him and I know he's a wrestler. I think that's his original. He did Fear Factor and he did uh, the, the commentating in the wrestling. MMA. MMA fighting, right? MMA. So, you know, that I had seen it. But again, I wasn't a big wrestling guy. And the, the, so we played and I see right away he's got like a Southwest Q, which is a you know, high end Q. And I played him the first game, you know, I make, we broke, I made a ball playing 10 ball and I made one or two and I figured, oh, let me miss and see what he's got. You know, I'm not gonna run out on him. He ran the table on me, I mean, like smooth. I saw right away, it's the only game he won. So I, I didn't like that. <laughs> but anyway, that's how I met him. Then we went to a comedy show where uh, a lot of guys got their start. Jay Leno, this and that, they, they, Chris Rock, they practice at this, it's a, it's a well-known, I think Redondo Beach, Richie Florence's hometown. There's a famous club there where the comedians go and test out new material. And anyway, we sat right in the front, Joe Rogan got up, and there were some other celebrities. It was, it was quite interesting. But anyway, that's, that's there, how I got to there. There was a great comedy store down in uh, Hollywood, and we, me and the wife were there, maybe early 90s or something. I, I forget what we was doing at Los Angeles, uh, playing pool, I would imagine. Uh, and we went in, and the headliner was Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> And we were very the close. Dice. We were very close to the front. And I pinched her and I says, don't say a word. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had just, I mean, just jumped on somebody. I loved scary. him. I loved him anyway. Um, I think I told you guys the story when I was in Germany, when they had the tournament in, uh, at the Penta. Uh -huh. Munich, right? Yeah, the Munich Open. And uh, I was with Edgar Nickel, who's a great German player. Right, and uh, Tony um, Geiger. 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 Yeah. No, I think it was Geiger. Deichner, Tony Deichner. We were driving, it was me and Low Rent, okay, in the back seat of a big Mercedes, supercharged, super turbo Mercedes that Tony had. He had a little bit of money. And uh, Edgar was in the front, okay. And we're driving down the Autobahn, we're doing 150 miles an hour, and uh, Edgar Nickel turns around and says, uh, Don, he says, uh, I've learned in a German accent, he says, I've learned some English. And I said, wow, that's great. He goes, let me, let me show you how good I'm doing, okay? And um, I'm not going to get into the actual graphics of the sentence that he came out with, okay? But it was, it was an Andrew Dice play opening, <laughs> opening line in one of the CDs that he put out, okay? <laughs> and it was, you know, with that my fear and a da ba 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 like that. And... Uh, he said, what do you think of my English? Okay, and Mo, Mo Rin says to him, you're doing really good, Andrew, just keep practicing. <laughs> so he learned his English from Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew Dice wow. Clay. You're on now? I With am, Don. I'm on now, yeah. Oh, it's my okay. show now, Mike. Now it's Don's show. So there, this is the guy that we scream at behind the scenes, the producer. He's always, here's, <laughs> ready, here, watch. I'm talking, Don's behind the camera. He's going like this. <laughs> You know, all this, like I don't see it, you know, all these kind of things. That's when we screw up, but you know, well, you I, I, I never it. make a mistake. You told me you couldn't see it, right? At I know, that's why I told me. them, look, I can't see I this. I know one thing Siegel can't see, and it's a treat to ride around with these guys. We've been to the grocery store, we've been out to eat, and for some reason, we, we have a hard time getting around following you. Oh, your me? Yeah. Your navigation system. Oh, yeah, my navigation system. His navigation right, system, it's yeah. like, and it's this a is comedy only... to see him uh, tell Don which way to go and this and that. Well, we pulled in last night, we was going to go eat, and it said, I've been here a hundred times, it's right here. Yeah, and I you said, know, I it know. was like three blocks down the road. <laughs> this is only my hometown, right? So what, a, you know. And he's not picking no more restaurants, because I'll I know, tell you that, what, yeah, both that. restaurants. Ah, that what? was pretty good last night there, uh, Kim. You're wrong. You're not picking no more. We're on a budget, so, you know, Don said, forget Morton's, forget Ruth Chris. <laughs> I, you know, we got to pick the lower scale. Now, where we are happens to be, uh, this is tiger country, we call it. Now, we're out by Disney, but also, if you drive down about maybe eight, ten minutes down the road, that's where tigers hang out. We'll throw that in. That's tiger I Woods. Isleworth, that's uh, uh, Bay Hill. 
all the restaurants that he would go to, which I also went to a lot of those. You know, you got Morton's, you got a Moore's, uh, you have Christina's. Not her, I don't know why I'm giving. What are we doing? A commercial for a restaurant? Well, yeah, but this is <laughs> this area. This is. Why don't you mention McDonald's? Sand no Lake Road. That. Keep trying. No, Keep mention names, okay? Sand, Sand Lake Road. Mike Lindell in, Mike. Huh? Get Mike Lindell in here with that pillow. No. Oh yeah. Oh, by the way, here now we're also doing some. I want him, Mike. Lindell, right? I want him on our show. I'm missing a few items. You know, we have the Last Supper. I'm going to put that kind of over here. The flag. What else? We got the eagle. Uh, the certificate of greatness. The cross. What else are we missing? The pillow. pillow the towels. I the sheets. Can, the blankets. Trust me, I could do that commercial twice as good as he does. What's your favorite line, Mike? My favorite line? Uh, wait a minute. Let me see. Wait a minute. Let me think. Uh, uh, well, uh, no, uh, I personally guarantee, guarantee this is the greatest pillow you'll ever use. And he's got the little, he personally guarantees it. Like that really means something, right? He personally guarantees it. Like what if you just guarantee it? He personally guarantees it. <laughs> My favorite line is the lowest price in history. Nah, really? He's got the, how about, how about this scam? Sorry. Okay. Here's what he does. First, you buy the, the, the towels. There's like six towels. He sells them. He had, comes up with some crazy $130 or something, but on sale, $39, which I think is still too high. Now his new commercial, buy one at the full price, get one free. But that's re now you're paying 60 a piece. You could have gotten it for 39. You get it? That's the latest one. No, wait, I gotta defend Mike Linda. Okay? Because first of all, okay, you're a bachelor. Right. I'm married 42 years to my lovely wife, Diane, okay? Yeah. I've got the pillows, the towels, the sheets. I got it all. Right. Now, my wife is a, a word that we used the other day, frugal, okay? Doesn't blow money. And I asked her, after you were talking about pricing, I said, is his stuff really good stuff for a good price? She said, absolutely. Okay? Really? Yeah. So you're stepping into the woman's world now, and you don't know what you're talking all about. All right. Okay? Maybe so it, stick to pool, Mike. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. For the first time ever, he doesn't know what he's talking about. First time ever. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I watch Fox News. That's the only channel. I sorry, CNN, but I watch Fox, and he is. Well, now wait. Let's get into this now. Okay, ready, Don. Don and I know. It's one, the pillow. What's the next one? Balance in nature. Balance in nature. Wait, and then then comes relief factor. Relief factor. And then what? Then they throw in a an insurance one. Or, and I, I, I can't watch it. No, when he comes on, I just turn the volume off. I mean, I just can't watch anymore. I like the one Relaxium. Oh, yeah, Relaxium. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, that's, what's his name? Uh, what's the guy again? He ran for president. Huckabee. No, Huckabee. Mike Huckabee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those four commercials are on, you know, just like, okay, I get it. Okay, but, you know, he, he, the guy's only worth $500 million, right? Mike Lindell. Oh, yeah. No, that's an unbelievable story, yeah. I like him. Yeah, I do. Right. He's a real guy, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, okay so can, now what's is next? another topic? Can we move on? Yeah, let's Mike, move on to am it. Am I boring you? Listen, I bought two, yeah, I bought two pillows from him. I sent them back, <laughs> you know. Look, you hear what he said? I bought two pillows and I had to send you them back. You hear what he said? We could leave. Yes, you you take leave. I'll take it from here. Don't worry. Oh, no, you, you're, you're fine. Let's just get off Mike Lindell. You know, let's go to Mike somebody else. And not Mike Siegel. You're a Georgia boy now, right? Well, now I am. California. I, 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 don't, I don't talk like a Georgia boy, but no. yeah. Let's talk about how there, Trevor yeah. emptied the spa in the pool and the guy came here with a cleaver. Yeah, and he that? kept me up all night. That's another one, Trevor. Trevor's uh, Mike's son, by the way. Yeah, Trevor uh, goes out in the spa and hangs around out in the pool for a while. And then the, later on that night, I'm right on the wall where, the, where all the noise went and kept me up all night, <laughs> all that noise. Thank you, Trevor. Good one, Trevor. All right, so let's, let's talk, get back ahead, to the pool. 1981, I think, I, I, I was on the road and I was in New Orleans and then my friend lived in uh, Houston. So I took off to Houston. So I get there and I don't know, I had about $4,000 in traveler's checks and a little bit of cash. And I start playing this, uh, popular name Pittsburgh John. Pittsburgh John. Yeah. So Pittsburgh John had these nice uh, little loafer ballet shoes on, blue, and he had these Jordache jeans on and this designer shirt. So uh, somehow I, I started playing him. So I was down to my last, I was playing 500 a game and I was down to my last $500. So I, I wound up beating him that night 
out of about 2,000, we played all night. I got up that morning and I'd ask him the night before, would you get that? I went to the mall and got the same outfit he had on, came back. And I had the same outfit on the next day we played that he had the night before. And I beat him out of another 3,000. Went to the mall again and got a same, same kind, but all different color. Three days in a row I beat him. And, and at the end, he just looked at me and says, you know, that's pretty good, Kim. <laughs> didn't he look, in my opinion, didn't he look like the greatest gangster if he was on yeah, TV? Yeah, he, he could have been a great uh, looking gangster. You had Humphrey Bogart, George Raft. They couldn't light a candle to this Pittsburgh John. He looked more like a gangster. Uh, he was a real nice guy, don't get, but oh, just the yeah. way he looked, real tall guy. But I got to tell you, a very, now you brought this up. Yeah. This is a great story. Okay. I'm going to try and do it as fast as I can. When I, when I was 17, the, the Gambino family used to back me. So they, I would go from high school at in Friday at 3 in the afternoon, a big black limousine would Trevor Rochester. don't listen to it, Rochester, New York. A big black limousine would come. They had my cue, and we'd drive to Detroit four or five hours away. We'd gamble Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning. They'd come back and drop me off to go to school. I was 17. Anyway, the first time I w went there, they had this place in Detroit called The Rack. It was the biggest gambling ever. I mean, guys would win and lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was, it was all kind of numbers guys, excuse me, drug guys, this guy, and pool players. Anyway, guys came in with suitcase. So I'll make a long story short, I go in there the first time about four in the afternoon, or no, it was about eight at night. I come in the first day, I look and there's a bench and Pittsburgh John is laying there. He's got a smile t-shirt and a magazine over his face, he's laying on that bench, dead broke, right? I go in there, I gambled, whatever this and that, the other thing. I come back about two weeks later, I come in and there's this big Cadillac right in front of the door, right? I walk in and I look and I see this guy, a tall guy, cashmere coat, diamonds, the hat, looked like a million dollars. Turns around, it's Pittsburgh John. I walk up to him, I go, what's going on? He goes, see that car out there? I go, yeah. He goes my car. I go, what happened? I hear th what happened. This guy, Jute Paul, he would come in with hundreds of thousands of dollars and he would have a hat. And he, if there was like 10 guys that wanted to play him, he'd write one to nine and put a, this is all true, put a P on one of the papers. Everyone would draw. And whoever got the P, he would gamble with them. Pittsburgh John drew the P. He beats him out of like 180,000. Okay, so John goes back to the, after a couple days, John goes back to the hotel. You know, he takes all the money, puts it on the bed, and he's got a shot of whiskey in one hand, a joint in the other hand, and the guy takes a Polaroid picture with all the money around the bed. I come back two weeks later, I look, there's John laying on that bench. I go, what happened? Oh, John went broke, the guy told me. I go, he went broke? He goes, yeah, the only thing he's got left is that Polaroid. <laughs> That's a true story. Well, you know what happens is guys like that, like Louis Roberts, when they made a big score, now all the other guys are trying to play him. And Speaking of Louis Roberts, I, I have a story. Uh, 1977, <laughs> Louis came to town, and boy, Louis, Louis looked like a movie star. He looked like oh, yeah. 200 million, this guy. He was dashing. He should have been in the movies, Louis Roberts. And, he's, and, and he's, he knew who I was just by because I was in the tournament. And he's come up, and I, or I came up to him, and, and he says, Kim, he says, listen, he says, you have to have your own cue, and you got to keep your cue and take care of it, and you have to sleep with this cue. So about four years later, I was on the road, and Louie was playing, and he had hawked his cue to like seven or eight different people, and he, and he had lost the match, and everybody come up to get the cue. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, like eight guys wanted the cue, and he, he had already got 800 air, 800, 800, 800, 800. <laughs> it was a cue. I mean, it was, it was hilarious. After him telling me that four years earlier. Louis, he looked like, he looked like Elvis Presley. Oh, he was I wish we had a picture. You know, we're going to have to do this, Don. you got to get a picture. Of, you know Louis Roberts. Right? Oh, I know him well, yeah. He looked like Elvis Presley. I mean, yeah. here's a guy. Remember when he had the tape in Bend, Oregon? Do you remember that? No, that was a little before my time. I met him uh, the next year in Sacramento. He had a, now here's, people ask me, oh, I forgot, here's a good story, a little sidebar. People ask me, who's the greatest player you ever saw? Me, you know, Mike Siegel. Well, who's, like, who do you, like, look up? I said, the greatest 
play I ever saw, ever, bar none, 10 to 1 over any, get, line them up, Ray Isdrick, Louis Roberts. For about six months, he, somebody gave him a tape, a, like he'd go to sleep and plug it in. It says, you're the greatest pool player that ever lived. You'll never miss a button. This and that. Anyway, so we're in Bend, Oregon. It's the first time I was aware of this. And we had the practice room, right? And there was like double doors. You'd come in where the tournament was. He comes in, and all of a sudden, everyone stops. I like, you could sense his aura. It was incredible. So Louis would do stuff like this. Like, you know, he'd have a jigsaw puzzle. The one you could barely make it, and the, this is tied up. And the, Louis goes, well, I'm going to hit the one. Cue ball's going to come over here, rebound off four, break up the eight. Seven's going to go over here, nine's going to go here. And, then, and he did it every time. I mean, just he had a look in his face that would scare anybody in the world. He played like that for about six months. Then somebody went in his room, grabbed the tape, threw it away, and then it was normal Louis. I got he, a, he played unbelievable. I got a little story on months. Louis. One time uh, in Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee, uh, Louis was there, and he, me and him was talking. And uh, it was the early '80s, uh, mid '80s probably. Uh, we were at uh, Chattanooga Beer Club, bigger club, uh, and he took the cue ball and put it on the spot, and he froze the nine on the end rail directly straight up and down. And he, he looked at me and he said, how many times do you think I can make it, you know, in a row? And I said, I don't know, Louie. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe he might make it four or five times in a row or whatever. Well, he sat there and this is honest truth. He made it 10 times in a row. I couldn't, couldn't make back that down. once. He couldn't hit back down the rail. He made it 10, that's how good of a shot maker he was. In my opinion, I mean, I knew him pretty good because I gambled with him a few times. Right. Uh, he was an unbelievable shot maker, right, Mike? He no, he looked his form in pool and the way he played was like unbelievable. I mean, I used to gamble with him a lot, and okay, I'll say this now. It's, I guess it's not like cheating, but my son knows this story. So I used to play. I used to give him the eight. Okay, that was our standard. We used to play a thousand dollar sets every time at a tournament. That was our standard game. However, he was not aware of the rack. Okay, so what I used to do, how I beat him was I made balls on the break. He put them right on the spot, perfect. And once I got my zone, I ran more racks, and I'd put the nine on the spot for him. He'd come down once in a while to check the rack, and I'd pull it down. Then as he walked back up, I'd push it up. Ooh. So I had the nine racked on the spot. That's how high I put him. First, I'd move up that far. He made one. Then I'd go up a little further, a little further. You know, eventually, I had the, the nine on the spot, and the one was that far above the spot. And it was like hitting a brick. But you know, well, I'm, I guess that's kind of cheating. I don't know. Kind of? Well, well kind of. It, well, you, it's kind of, yeah. you got to, you know, it's like, uh, well, what's that saying? Uh, what's that phrase and other uh, things? Well, what is that? Uh, but not buyer beware. Well, so is that why I never was able to make a ball when you yeah, in course. tournaments? Yeah, so, you did that in tournaments? No, not in tournaments. Well, you know, yeah, Louis okay. Roberts, Louis Roberts yeah, was known... <laughs> Louis Roberts was known to be, like you said, one of the best. As far as I'm concerned, he was a really great, really great player. He played. But he also, if he'd had a road man, if he'd had a road manager, yeah, Louis died in Las Vegas, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Where was he from? He was St. Louis. Louis. St. Louis. 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 But anyway, um, he was known to be a great player. But one problem he had was was. Louis would continue to play. Like if he give a guy the six You're ball, right. he, he didn't want to quit. He would say, well, you got the uh, five right. now. And it, it just keep going. And finally he would, I mean. They all go broke. Yeah, like he him would and go Pittsburgh broke. John, he, he, no matter how much he, money they yeah, had, he, that's they, how he was. They would go broke. I mean, well, yeah. that's plus, why everybody fired at him when plus they had Louis. Louis. The drink got Louis. Yeah, it did. Yeah, he he, he yeah. got a little trouble with But he drink. was a really good guy. Yeah, as far as yeah, yeah, was, all right, we're off, we're off Louis. Let's okay. go for some. Let me ask you guys a question, if I may, go ahead, just for one second, because you're on a roll here. Okay. Roll. So are you guys going to keep doing this? Why not? Doing what? Are we doing, doing this? this? What are we a, doing? This is definitely, yeah. What are we doing? Doing oh, this? What are we doing? Show again? I forgot. What is this called? Straight, straight pool. Straight. Wait a minute. You know, there's something else too. I forgot. Make sure you go to the Pro Billiards <laughs> website. We have tips. We have call-ins. We have memorabilia. We have cues. We have shirts. We have hats. We have everything known and all of our shows, the series, Legends of Billiards series. Uh, the first six that we started, you can see them in their entirety. Plus, you can see the three amigos as we 
rebroadcast those, redigitized into today's market. So again, for all that information, you gotta go to the website, probilliardstour.com. Uh, we hope to see you there. What else, Don? So we should just end. It's a wrap. Okay, we're gonna wrap, because again, we have no idea what we're doing, but so far, it's funny. <laughs>